At the Monaco Grand Prix, we were treated to some really clear underbody shots of the Red Bull car. And in this video, we're gonna go through all the details on this underbody, what the legality is for all these parts, and what they're doing aerodynamically. For those of you that are new to my channel, I was an aerodynamicist for Mercedes for 2018, 19, and 20 Formula One seasons. I now work as an aerodynamics consultant, designing aero packages for race cars in all different classes all around the world. Now let's waste no more time and get into the analysis of the underbody of the car. So in other videos, we've already discussed a few things on this car, and I'm not going to go over those again today. But what I'd say is that if you want to have a look at how the double barge board out there and the floor edge cut out work on this car, I suggest you check out my Red Bull initial analysis video. And then this uh, double T tray setup, or people are now calling it the bib wing, uh, I analyze how that works in both my Aston Martin and Ferrari videos. But in this video, we're only going to be covering new material. Of course, as always, this analysis comes with the disclaimer of Formula One cars are very complex aerodynamic flow fields and it would be impossible to accurately predict everything that's going on just by eye. However, I'm still going to make the best guess I can based on the data I have available and my past experience. Now, even though the rules are actually quite restrictive in terms of what you can do with the floor, uh, Red Bull has obviously been able to squeeze in quite a lot of detailing on this car. So we're going to try and break it down component by component, starting at the front and working our way rearwards. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is the strakes. Now, it's quite hard to tell exactly what's going on here because of the complexities of the 3D curvature and how the lighting's hitting it. But if we take a few references on the strakes, we can see what's actually happening. If we follow the lower edge of this strake and look at the curvature through there, it's actually got a sort of double kick reflex layout. It goes out, curves back and goes long. Now it's, it's going outwards this entire time, uh, but the curvature is definitely not going in the same direction. Whereas the inboard strake doesn't seem to have as much of this effect. It's more of a sort of straight line edge and then kicking out at the rear. So why would Red Bull want such a wonky shaped strake? Well, there's a few different theories that I have. The first one is they're trying to match the expansion between all their different components. Now, the thing that, that brings this to mind is that if you have a look, they have their strake along here that's part of their double barge board setup is going into curvature this way. Now this curvature and the, the angle of it is actually quite well paired to this portion of the strake here. So I'm wondering if they're trying to not pull away too much from this strake here and just basically support it with a little bit of additional outwash from the forwards portion of the strake. And maybe that's why they haven't gone for a setup that's more like that, which would pull a little bit of support off that inboard portion of that double barge board. And that would also explain why this strake here doesn't seem to need the curvature as much. The next theory is obviously there's some 3D curvature going on with the roof. So if we were to look at inside profile, we'd have the leading edge of the front here of the roof and it's got some curvature going back there and the roof looks like it could potentially be doing a bit of this action at the front so the strakes would be coming out like this um, or I mean we can't really tell but maybe the roof is going like that and the strakes are going with different curvature I think it's more likely that it's the blue curvature but if they do have this sort of curvature going on here and they want to maintain somewhat of a uniform pressure distribution over the strake, they're going to have to match the curvature of the strake to the curvature of the roof. Because if you imagine if the airflow is going this way, if we have curvature this way, we're going to generate a higher pressure here than at this point here and here. Now, if you want the strake to have a uniform pressure distribution along this particular region here, we actually need to make it so that the strake curves in two different manners. So basically as this roof is reflexing down, the strake will have to have increased curvature to compensate for the roof reflexing down. With that in mind, looking at the curvature in this particular portion of the fillet on the strake there and looking at how the light bends around there, you can see there's definitely some form of, of double warble going on between the roof and the strake. And perhaps they're just doing this to try and get a nice pressure distribution across the strake. The final thought is there'll be some degree of outwash away from the center line at the front of the floor. And maybe some of, of this particular detail uh, is trying to get alignment of the strake to match the flow that's moving uh, outwards. Now, obviously with any sort of wing or strake, you have to make sure that the leading edge is aligned in the correct direction with the oncoming airflow, because otherwise if it was misaligned, like let's say that the airflow was going this way and we had a strake that curved like that, 
uh, then what you would have is that you could end up with some separations on this side here as well as a high pressure region on this side here. So maybe there's a little bit of that going on as well. Maybe they're trying to align it to the oncoming flow. The other thing they could be doing is trying to generate a strong vortex along this forwards portion, uh, and they found that generating in the mid isn't as profitable. You also got to remember that these strakes have a limited volume in which they can operate. And if they wanted to, to crank the rear more, then they couldn't really uh, continue the crank from the front outwards because this strake would end up over here somewhere. Now speaking of that rear cranking, the next question is what is the, the rearwards cranking achieving? Obviously the, the rearwards portion of this strake, they've got quite a, an aggressive outwash region at the back, so what are they doing with that? Now my theory here is, is that this rearwards portion is going to generate quite a lot of outwash, uh, and the Red Bull floor obviously has a, a fairly cranked flap in this particular corner that you can see from the top surface of the floor. So they're getting quite a lot of outwash there. They're harnessing that to get local load over here. But also by cranking this rearwards portion, they're getting quite a favorable exit condition for any vortices that are spooled up along here. We're gonna get a suction peak over here and that's gonna improve the strength of these vortices. Now, any of these losses that are coming off the back here because they've cranked this harder and they're generating a lot of loss by working the flow harder in that region, they're gonna be kicked outwards by the outwash. They're gonna end up kicked up and out over here and that means that they're going to interfere with the flow downstream the car not that much whereas if you crank the front really hard all the losses from this front will get fed into the main system whereas i'm guessing that the rearwards portion of the strength if they crank that that loss will just get largely uh, kicked outboard and won't be absorbed into the main vortex system of the underfloor which you want to keep clean because the cleaner you keep it the more persistent and strong it will be down the car and the more suction you get so now that we talked about the strakes, we need to talk more about the vortex generating system across the entire front of the car. Because there's quite a few devices that are here and working together. And there's some interesting detailing around it. Now, obviously we were just mentioning the strakes, which each strake is going to shed a vortex uh, along here. And we've talked before about the winglet at the front, which is also going to shed a vortex in the same direction as the strakes. But the Red Bull actually has two extra little details, and that's these little curvature bits in the underfloor. Firstly, let's talk about the legality around how they exist. This is the CAD of my trusty legality boxes that we've been using for the rest of these F1 explainer videos. And what you'll see is, is that we have a number of legality volumes in the underfloor. The important one I want to note is this big one here, because this is the volume that you are allowed to put your floor in. And you'll see that it's got a big cutout for the tunnel. So you can't go below that particular height for the tunnel. You'll also notice that it gives you quite a lot of space to flare out the central portion of your floor. Now, it's not as simple as that because what we also have is this shadowing surface here. You can see that this shadowing surface is smaller than the region around it. So this particular surface, everything that's on this surface has to be on the reference plane, which means it has to be on the bottom of this particular volume. So everything that's on this blue surface has to be on that blue surface. So you only have this little width from the blue surface out to the edge of this volume that you can actually fit things in. For a more diagrammatic representation of what Red Bull is doing, they basically have a region here that goes along and then they have several strake details that are coming out like this and blending back and blending back and then as it goes rearwards, it flares out to the full width. And if they go back, they then have some other detailing that we're gonna talk about in a bit, where they actually have several steps diffusers going up here like that. Now, I haven't quite drawn this right because the rules only allow you to have a 25 millimeter convex or concave radius. So what I'd actually have to do is go and soften everything off with a fillet there and there. So it's all blended a bit and that's all with the intent of stopping any vortices or structures being shed off. But with something like a sausage, you still can get a vortex roll up. It's just not quite as efficient as having a nice sharp shedding edge. And this is more or less what Red Bull is doing here. So if we look back at this picture, we can now see that if we were to trace our outer volume of where the legality box would be, you can see that it would go along there like that. And you can see that the inner volume or the surface that has to be shadowed would go along here and cut down like that. So in this particular region, Red Bull is free to make these lumpy little sausage strakes. 
And then what you'll see is that they're all up washing. So we're probably gonna get a little bit of local load along there. So a little bit of extra downforce uh, and they're gonna shed some structures that are gonna be spinning in the same way as everything else in this region. So we're gonna have a huge number uh, of devices that are all contributing to vorticity that's all going in the same sense. Now, if we look further along the tunnel, what we can see is that Red Bull has a really rounded roof in their tunnels. It's really obvious to see by the way the light bounces off it. And you see that what they're trying to do is they're trying to really house that vortex structure that they're shedding. Now, all the cars across the grid are going to have some form of vortex in this particular tunnel. It's kind of the consequence of how the rules work with the new strake setup. But Red Bull, as far as I can tell from the underbody shots we've seen of the other cars, has the most rounded and tunneled out roof. And this will probably help reduce losses introduced by scrubbing of the vortex against the roof and will help keep the vortex nice, strong, healthy and powerful. And as these vortices are a huge driver uh, in underfloor suction, that's only going to be a good thing. The only negative of having such a rounded roof is, is that you lose out the ability to raise the corners up and get extra volume. So if you imagine if that was our rounded roof profile in blue there, if I went to the legality box, I could raise my roof corners like that, which gives me a little bit of extra volume, even if it's somewhat untidy volume in the corner. And this is a slightly different trade. Of course, the other way of looking at it is if I was in a portion where I wanted the roof to be low, I could try and bring it down flat as much as possible. So you can see that the rounded roof is a trade-off between using the maximum of your legality box versus potentially having some nicer flow effects. Moving further rearwards again, what you'll see is that nice rounded roof actually gets pulled back to a flat line at the diffuser kick. Now, sooner or later, uh, the legality boxes were eventually going to hit where you've got a flat legality box here. So whether uh, Red Bull decided they wanted to put the roof at the top or the bottom of that legality box, sooner or later, they're going to flatten it out to get the best performance in the region. That's more or less what has happened along here. Now, just off to the side, you'll notice a tiny little floorage detail over here that a number of people have been calling the ice skate. And let's talk a little bit about that. The ice skate is basically a clever interpretation of the floor edge wing rules, where Red Bull has gone and put their floor edge wing below the floor instead of above it, which isn't actually prohibited. The floor edge wing rules basically state that your floor edge wing has to be in this box here, this box that I've now highlighted in blue there, there's also some limits on curvature of the wing. It can't have a curvature less than 25 millimeters in a concave direction, although it can have as tight as you want in a convex direction. And there's a series of rules around the brackets that it's allowed to have. Now, what I've drawn here is I've drawn, you can see just this little gray floor bit that's in the legality boxes there. And that's somewhat representative of Red Bull's floor through this region. So what I've done is that if we remove the floor edge box, I've made a floor that's low at the edge uh, and then it kicks up uh, into the, the main legality box up here. And what I've done underneath is I've gone and I've put in a little edge wing. Now the edge wing has some interesting rules around it in terms of you can't have it closer than five millimeters to the, the floor surface. So you can see that I've had to space it off a bit from the floor surface. There's a little air gap. I'll just hide that legality volume so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see that I've got a, an air gap at the top with these red mounting brackets. What I've got there, they're mounting brackets. Uh, they're basically an extension of the strake and the rules around this are you can have no more than six. They have to be at least 50 millimeters apart and they can't be more than 60 millimeters in any dimension. And you can see that between all those little details, I've basically managed to make a strake in my underfloor. And with this image fresh in your head, let's have a look at the Red Bull one. You can see here, it's pretty much exactly the same detail. A wing that ends at the end of that legality box. Legality box is going to be coming up along here like that. You can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six stays attaching it to the floor. The stays aren't visible from below, which is a requirement of the rules and the strake fits within that vertical box as well. So you can see here that it's perfectly legal interpretation of the floor edge wing. There's nothing in the rules that says the floor edge wing has to be above the floor. Certainly a very clever way of looking at the rules though. Now what does this particular device do? Well, I've seen a few people online talking about it being a stiffener. I find it very hard to believe because there's many other ways of stiffening the floor effectively that don't involve putting a, a large strake uh, in an aerodynamically very sensitive area. So I would assume 
that this particular device is almost purely for aero reasons. And the reason it's metallic is probably because they're worried about it grenading itself if it was carbon and it scraped the ground. So from an aerodynamics perspective, let's have a look at how it works. If you imagine we have an edge here of the floor and that's gonna shed some sort of vorticity in it as air is, is drawn in by the diffuser. We're gonna get vorticity going along this edge here. And we've got air that's in washing this way still. Even though the vorticity is coming off this edge, uh, we're going to have air that's in washing. Now this particular strake along here like that is going to act as somewhat of a barrier to that in washing air. So it's going to resist the motion of the air inwards, but it's also going to spool up its own vortices coming off there. So what we have is we have uh, a means of breaking up this shedding edge into multiple shedding edges. Now breaking that up into multiple shedding edges will likely make it a little bit cleaner than just having one shedding edge and it might make it a little bit more robust to different conditions. The vorticity from these, these devices here is going to get fed up and into the diffuser sooner or later, so we want to make sure it's generated in a nice clean manner. In a way, splitting it across multiple shedding edges isn't that different to some of the other floors that run slots in this region, because if we look at front view of the slot, basically if you imagine it's like that, uh, what we'll have is we have uh, air that's rushing in there and it's going to spin up a vortex there, air that's there going to spin up a vortex there. So we'll have two vortices here which will go down and merge downstream later on. All these structures are likely to merge as they move downstream, including all the front ones. So in that sense, this ice skate setup is very similar to just having the slotted floor edge like many other teams. The primary difference of this setup is A, you don't bleed in any clean air from the top, which may or may not be a good thing. And B, you have more vertical surface area uh, that could potentially help with resisting the ingress in flows from the side. Obviously, Red Bull has found performance in it, and judging by the fact that Ferrari has rolled out uh, its own version of this particular detail, I would imagine there is just generally quite a bit of performance in this particular device. You also note that this ice skate is just on the periphery of where their floor step is. You can see that this is where the tunnel is beyond here. So it's basically extending uh, the wall height of their tunnel to the full height and then it's basically putting this outboard foot plate on the outer portion of it. Now moving back inboards and moving back a little bit, what we'll see is uh, the detail that I mentioned earlier which is the multiple floor kicks. So you can see that there's several different kicks along here and you can see there's one kick all the way at the back where the floor steps multiple times further up. Now having extraction here makes a lot of sense. Red Bull looks like they're running their floor to the full width uh, of legality. So they've got a, a big area across here like that. Uh, so they've got this big floor area, very low to the ground. Uh, and then they're putting basically mini diffusers there that should generate more local load and suction in this big area that's in close proximity to the ground. So I imagine that would be quite helpful. But we have to ask why they're multiple steps instead of just a single step. The first thing that comes to my mind when I look at this is that I think that uh, by having these fairly aggressive kicks, we've obviously already established that they're likely generating a bit of local loading here, but I would say that having this kick would cause a shedding edge there that is gonna shed some sort of vortex uh, off the side of it, even though we are limited by the 25 millimeter radius rule. But having that there should get us some vorticity and having multiple ones of those should get us multiple bits of vorticity. So we should be able to power up a decent structure along there. By having multiple shorter kicks, we can probably make it a little bit more aggressive uh, and that might shed a stronger vorticity than one large progressive kick as you'd see on say the Ferrari. As we move further rearwards, we can see that pretty much at the rear of that shadowing surface uh, that we were talking about earlier, the Red Bull kicks up immediately quite aggressively there, except it's worth noting that the center they still leave quite flat. Now this could be two reasons. One would be there'd be a lot of loss coming off the back of the plank there. So if we have too much loss and we try to crank too hard in that, we could end up with separations. The other is, is that there is a, a gearbox and gearbox carrier back here uh, on the top surface and they probably have to cut in at some point to make sure they can package everything around that. Really though, we're seeing quite aggressive cranking here as well as the, the aggressive cranks on the little steps. So they're really trying to get a huge amount of load in that region. And that's something that seems to be a common philosophy across most of the teams that we're seeing the underbody of. And that's an explanation of how the Red Bull under tray is likely working. Well, that's all for this analysis video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd like to see next from me. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.